on, mate. Come on. Gah! The cyclocross bike is the original, versatile, off-road drop handlebar bike. Actually, it's pretty fair to say that it's one of the original off-road bikes. But back in the day, they had tyres that were just 25 millimetres wide and they had cantilever brakes. The combination of which was so ineffective that a cyclocross race was about 40% running. Now though, as you can see, things have changed. We have tyres that are wider and grippier than a road bikes to give you more control and more comfort. You also have a slightly taller bottom bracket so that you have more pedal clearance when riding off road and the handling is a little bit more stable so you've got way more control when it's slippy or loose. But now there's a new bike in town. Only I'm two metres away mate. Oh, oh yeah well I say in town I mean the uh, forests and mountains of Alta Badia. But uh, here is a gravel bike which has wider, grippier tyres, geometry that makes the bike more fun and safer to ride in loose conditions and more comfort built into the frame than a road bike thanks to either the components that are specced on it or the frame itself. I'm going to say, Ollie, wider tyres, more stable handling, more comfort. Yeah. I mean, that's exactly what my bike promises. Yeah, uh, yeah. I guess you, you could be forgiven for wondering what exactly is the difference between a, a gravel bike and a, and a cross bike then. You could. Fortunately though, given that Canyon have literally just supplied us with a brand new in-flight cyclocross bike and a brand new Grail gravel bike, we are perfectly placed to actually drill down and find the answer to this question once and for all. A question that's actually really important to many of you out there who might be considering your next bike purchase. Because after all, who wouldn't want fun, versatile, and comfortable with their next bike? I'll tell you what, this is gonna be really tough, isn't it? Riding these brand new, amazing gravel and cross bikes in the finest dirt and gravel that Alta Badia has to offer. You, you say that, Ollie, but this, I mean, it could actually be quite tough because you haven't really ridden off-road very much, right? Yeah, um, I'm, I'm pretty green at, at riding off-road. I mean, I've, I've never really done it, to be honest, but I guess that means I can offer a fresh perspective as a lot of you guys have probably never ridden much off-road either. Whereas yourself, I mean, you're, a, you're an off-road veteran. I, I don't really like the word veteran, Ollie. Thank you very much. A bit, bit sensitive about that. Okay, should we, uh, should we go and ride the bikes then, Dad? Before we go into the physical differences, we're going to see if we can feel any difference first. So we're inventing a new race discipline. Gravel cross! Ollie, it's a short circuit with some road sections, some gravel sections, some muddy sections, one brief bit of running, two laps with a bike change after the first lap in our official pit area. You ready, Si? I think I'm ready, mate, yeah. Count you down. Okay. Three, two, two, one, go. So I'm going to time Sai and also help him with his bike change in this, the official pit area, which is conveniently marked by this cow pack. Wrong side. <laughs> Four minutes 40 for the first lap, so we'll see what he does on the gravel bike. Big 
keen, isn't it? I think he's been quicker. Grab old Ross. He's got a future. That was wicked. <laughs> yeah, we'll see about that. Four minutes 40 on the first lap and four minutes 20 on the second lap. Well, four minutes 22 on the second lap. Interesting. So you were quicker on that. It doesn't surprise me, actually. Wider tyres. Like, what is it, seven mil difference? Yeah. But you can hit that single track so much faster with the wider tyres. Like, the bike feels very different. Like, it, it feels better suited to that kind of riding because it's so rocky. Yeah. It's, I mean, it's not a cross course. So it's gravel cross. But uh, see what you think. I reckon you'll find the same thing. I'm genuinely quite surprised at just how much I like the Grail gravel bike. I mean, on this terrain, gravel, effectively, surprisingly, the gravel bike actually feels a bit better. Good thing about this is that if we create a Strava segment, I'm guaranteed at least second place on the leaderboard. Winner. Okay, mate, off you go. Ready, go. Proper stuff across that, you went through a puddle. What a stupid sport. I thought you were a fell runner. <laughs> good lad, good lad. Come on, mate, you've got this, you've got this. Go, 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 go. <laughs> just, just jump on this one, mate. That's the gravel bike. Well done. Good lad. Well done. Go, go, go. Come on, dig in. Ugh. Oh, you nailed it. Uh. Uh. I can't stop giggling. What a legend. Yeah. Go on, mate. Whoa, you're flying. Go, go, go. Boom. He shaved nearly a minute off. Maybe we know something that Matthew van der Poel doesn't. Well, not so fast. Maybe if van der Poel was racing cyclocross on gravel in the Dolomites, as opposed to thick mud in Northern Europe. But even then, it wouldn't be quite that simple. Tire width, for a start. I mean, the fact is that gravel cross is more gravel than cross. So to truly understand the difference between these two bikes, we are gonna need to delve into the tech. Historically, gravel bikes have come from cyclocross bikes, and so, as we'll see, there is an awful lot of shared DNA between the two. But now, it's left the door open for people to design cyclocross bikes that are back to being specific for racing in mind, and this in-flight is one of those. So it's designed around a typical cyclocross course, which tends to be quite grassy or muddy, relatively smooth, and with lots of tight turns. You will also find that there's actually less tyre clearance on this bike than the gravel bike, and that's because the UCI stipulate a maximum tyre width of 33 millimetres. And so although this will accommodate that and with plenty of mud clearance, in fact, the tubes are designed to shed mud as well, you would struggle to fit a 40 millimetre wide tyre in, certainly at the back. We would have checked, except for the fact that this runs a 140 mil rotor at the back, whereas that's on 160, but again, it's fit for purpose. You're not going to be going down any epic descents in a cyclocross race. Now, much along the same with the gearing, actually. I noticed when I rode this one back to the hotel 
that actually you run out of gears relatively quickly when riding down a fast road descent. Perfect gearing for a cyclocross course, but not necessarily for epic road rides. Our two bikes also look vastly different, and a lot of that is down to this horizontal top tube. You rarely see a compact geometry cyclocross bike. And that's because when you need to pick it up and put it on your shoulder, you need as much space in that front triangle as possible. Now, it's perhaps not something you notice when it's someone who is six foot one, like myself, because the frame is naturally gonna be quite big. But certainly, when I was teaching Emma to ride cyclocross, we actually couldn't really work out how to get her arm through the frame because it has to be so compact for her height. In this case, though, the fact that it's horizontal gives even more space to get your arm and your shoulder through. But the reason it dips down here is simply to get a bit more seat post exposed to get much more compliance out the back of the bike. You can see, if it went on there, that's quite a stubby bit of seat post and it would be feeling a little bit on the stiff side. Now, lastly, the geometry of the bikes. It's actually really quite similar. The chainstay length is similar. The angles of the seat tube and the head tube are quite similar. But the significant difference, which might not sound significant, is the bottom bracket height. So effectively how much lower the bottom bracket axle is compared to the wheel axle. And this one is 11 millimeters higher. So that actually makes the bike sit much higher and it feels slightly less stable when you're going quickly. What it does is it gives you much more pedal clearance so that you can keep pedaling on more of the course. And unfortunately, as any of you who race cyclocross will know, you have to pedal almost all of the time when racing cyclocross. But what's interesting is when you look at our leanometer or our leanometer, and you'll see that both bikes actually have similar pedal clearance despite the difference in bottom bracket height. And that's because the wider tires also sit higher on the grail. So actually their bottom brackets relative to the ground are very similar, but it affects the feel of the bike far, far more. In contrast, gravel is not often about pure speed. It's about comfort, big miles, versatility, and going on adventures. And consequently, you've got a few features. So you've got bigger tires than the UCI would legally permit you to run in a cross race. You've also got bosses and mounting points everywhere to festoon all your worldly possessions. And there's loads of comfort features built into the frame. So we've got canyons split seat post here, which is able to deflect and give more comfort in the rear. And we need to talk about the hover bar. So the hover bar looks a little bit weird, but when you're riding it, you don't kind of notice the way it looks and it feels, well, pretty comfortable. And according to Canyon, it's seven times more compliant than the H31 cockpit on the in-flight. Because you're likely to see a wider variety of surfaces than you would with a thoroughbred cross bike, you need to be able to pedal at both 50 kilometers an hour and five kilometers an hour. And in this case, to help with that, I've got a wider range of gears. I've got a 50, 11, and then a 34, 34. Typically cross bikes have tighter ranges of gears. As a relatively inexperienced off-road rider, the Grail is really appealing to me because it offers loads of versatility. I could use this in local cross races where you don't have to adhere to the strict UCI rules and let's face it, I'm a long way off entering any UCI events. Oh, I nailed it! Ugh, what a stupid sport. But it'd also be perfect for going on gravel riding and bikepacking adventures too. Because I'm less proficient off-road and don't have mad skills with a Z yet, the bigger tires and the wider handlebars and the lower bottom bracket and the increased compliance within the frame just help come together to give me more confidence when I'm riding the bike, especially off-road. And that's something that just feels really good for me. Cross bike versus gravel bike then, what is the big difference? Fundamentally, this is a more versatile option, whereas that is a thoroughbred cross racing machine. What about the bike, Ollie? Ha, no, I think you're absolutely right. But the difference is it's still relatively subtle, aren't it? The wider tires make a big, big difference. But then on this one, just that slightly higher bottom bracket changes the character so much. And so, unless you ride them back to back, you might not necessarily perceive those differences. 
But when you are in this incredibly fortunate position that we've been in today, it's remarkable the characters that shine through, isn't it? Yeah, it really is. Now, if you'd like to see more epic off-road content with mad skills with a Z, then why not check out Sai's awesome mountain bike versus gravel bike adventure video in Iceland. Click down here. Yeah, and please give this one a thumbs up if you've enjoyed it.